So how does Rails allow us to have these more secure passwords? Well, the first thing we need to do is to tell it to allow us to use that cryptographically secure hash function. And in order to do that, we're going to use a library uh, and we're going to specify that in our gem file. So if you go near the bottom, there's this line right here that says use active model has secure password. Turns out that's the functionality we're going to use. So if we enable this library right here and then we go ahead and install using bundle, we're going to be able to use that library. It's going to be pretty quick on the coding side of things, but we should thoroughly test this. So let's add some tests to our system. So we're going to look in our user model and what we want to do is replace this password in our database with our password digest. And it will also be nice, and so we're going to require it here, to be able to uh, verify that when a user gives us a particular password and we combine it with the salt in our digest, that we, when we run it through our cryptographically secure hash, that it matches the hash in, in our digest. And so this authenticate method will provide that mechanism for us. Now, we are going to store our password digest in our database, and we want to be able to receive a password from a user, but we don't want to store it in our database. So this is going to be what's called a virtual attribute. It's an attribute that we can set and, and make it look like we're storing it, but we're actually going to convert the password that the user gives us into the, the digest that we're going to actually store in our database. Okay, so if, if we do this, this is what we want our model to be able to look like. And if we run our tests now, we expect it to, to fail. And we expect it to fail because we don't have this password digest method and we don't have the authenticate method. And so it shouldn't pass. And we see those two failures. We, our user doesn't respond to password digest and doesn't respond to authenticate. So let's uh, handle the password digest part first of all. And the way we're going to do this is we want to store it in our database. Now you could imagine with a, as minimal a functionality as our database supports right now, we could just scrap our database, reconstruct it, and include password digest and get rid of password. But in general, we need to be able to support a data, uh, website that's already running where we modify the database uh, because we have new requirements that are given to us by our, our users, our clients, our customers. And so Rails provides a mechanism for us to be able to modify our database rather than start over from scratch. And that is what's called a migration. So we're going to generate a migration and you have to give it a name. I'm going to call it add password digest to users. I know that's a really um, unique name but it actually works out quite nicely and in that migration I'm going to add the field called password digest. When I do this it will go ahead and generate a new Ruby file with the command to add password digest to the user's field. Now, I'll just open it up real quick. 14, 14. Now Ruby's really smart. It looked at this name and said, oh, you're going to add it to this column and the name is going to be password digest. Um, and so it wrote all the code for me. If I gave it some weird garbage name, it wouldn't be able to do, put this line of code in here because it wouldn't know what that means. But I was nice and it helped. And this is, this is going to be helpful for us, um, but that's not all. We want to add password digest, but we want to remove column from users, and we want it to be password. Now, um, if we want this to be reversible, we could also put in that it was a string. The reason why I'm not using the rename column functionality is because what we have stored in password is not a digest and so we don't want to turn what's a password into a digest because it's going to confuse our system. It's better to just start with a blank 
digest than a something that looks partially ripe. So if, if we save this file now, we can go ahead and tell Rails that we want to update our database with this command. So, and we do this with rake db migrate. And what that does is, is Rails will look in this db migrate directory for any migrations that we created <coughs> that it hasn't run into and follow the Ruby instructions in them. So in this one, it has two instructions, add the column and remove a column. And we see that it does that. It adds a column and it removes a column. And you can see rake db migrate status that what it's done is it has run two migrations. It has run the migration where we create our users and it's run the migration where we add our pa password digest to our users. We, in addition, need to tell Ruby that we want our test database to be identical to our development database. And so we run the rake test colon prepare to get that same functionality. And if we look, remember we shouldn't edit this at the DB schema, we can see that Rails has said, oh, your database, I think, now looks like this. It has a name, an email, and a password digest. And I'm, I'm quite happy with that. That's what we want. So now, if we run our tests, we should get our password digest test to fail. Whoa. Well, what's going on here? Well, look at this. Now that we've taken password out of the database, every time where we try to set the password in our factory girl, it complains because we don't have a, a password method anymore. And if we scroll up, eventually we will continue to, to see the complaint where um, authenticate isn't uh, being matched either and uh, I didn't notice where it was but uh, this is this is expected because no longer can we set the password it's a virtual attribute but we haven't set it well how, how do we get that to work well the answer to that is to use our rails mechanism so if we edit our model and we add literally one line of code as secure password that is the code that Ruby provides to us that says hey I want you to accept a password and transform it into a password digest and store it in the password digest additionally it provides us the authenticate method automatically. So if we run our test now, all of a sudden we should start seeing it pass because we've provided a, a password mechanism and we haven't pr provided um, that we didn't before. So what are all these errors going on here? Notice this. It says validation failed. Password confirmation can't be blank. One thing that has secure password requires is that when you create an account with a password that you also have a matching password confirmation and, and not just a, a password. So if you can think of most websites, they ask you to type your password twice so that you can make sure that you didn't do a typo or anything like that. So let's first start by fixing our factory girl uh, to do that. So if we look in here and we edit spec factories, what we're going to do is we're going to just do password and its confirmation. And we're going to give it the same value as our, our password right here. That will now make it work. Um, let me demonstrate that real quick. Rails console. I'm going to add something here, this sandbox command. What that does is that says, 
if I do things with the database, don't store them permanently in the database. So it's a way that you can test things out without totally messing up your, your database right here. So what we were doing is we were doing user.create and we were basically doing something like name is uh, user1, our um, email is user.1, that example, um, and our password was password. That's what we were doing before and we were, we're getting our nil right here, right? If we do uh, user equals and we do user dot valid, it's not valid because we are we don't have that password confirmation. It, but it has figured out what the password digest is for us. Notice that it's converted our password into that password digest. But if we do something uh, and add password confirmation and give it the same password, let's give it different password first, we get that, that same invalid password. But if we clean that up and give it the confirmation the same as our password, we actually have it it's stored now. We have an ID for it and we've got a password digest and everything is good. So if we store, uh, if we have our factory girl set this password confirmation to the same as our password, we'll be in much better shape. So we can quit out of here and we can run our tests and verify that now every time our, our factory girl creates a, a user, it's been created properly. And so we see a lot more success now because of that. Now what we have left here is things like um, we have failures for, for logging in. We have uh, failures for um, empty passwords um, and blank passwords. And so we'll have to clean those up in, in our next episodes.